Good evening, Mount Heber. Tonight's scripture will come from Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the shadow, through the valley of, the, the shadow of, the valley of death, I will fear no evil. Thy art are with me, thy rod and staff, they are comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou un my head with all, my cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Our Father, Father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Father God, once again, we come with bowed heads and humble heart. Father God, we come, first of all, thank you, thanking you for all your many blessings. Father God, we come knowing the situation that we are going through in this year of 2020. Father God, we need a message from on high. And Father, as we prepare to receive that message, but Father, give it to us so we can take it out and, sh and give it to a dying world, Father God. But Father, we need you. We can't, we can't bear none of this on our own. And Father God, we know you have all power to do so. So Father God, deliver a message to us. We need it, my Father. There's so much going on <laughs> during these times. Every hour, every minute, every second is something, is something else. Father God, we can't get along down here. We need you, my Father. We need you right now in the midst of all of this. Because it only will get worse if man try to handle it. Father God, we need you. We know you have 
the idea of what to do. So, Father, please so have mercy. Deliver your message from on high, Father God, so we all, we all could comfort one another instead of hurting one another. Father God, please so hear our prayer. Father God, it's in your righteous name of Jesus. Amen. me through my good you love me through my bad you love me through my good you love me through my bad Take away my future. me through my good you love me through my bad hey, you love me through my good you love me through my bad away my future because of my pain that you love me to my good and my bad Loving me, even now, loving me. me through my bed.
me to my bed. Away my future because of my past, my past that he loved me through my good and my bad. This evening, my Heavenly Father, I come before you thanking you for all the things that you have done from the early existence of my life up until now. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me for the good and the bad. And then, Lord, I want to thank you because you didn't just take me away you kept on loving me, even through the bad. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you for being allowed me to come tonight to give you some praise in the house of the Lord. Yes, I'm on Zoom on Sunday. I'm on Zoom on Wednesday. But it's nothing like being in the house of the Lord. And I want to thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for blessing my family. Thank you for keeping them. Thank you for all the families that are represented in your name. And then, my, my Lord, I want you to bless my Hebron family. Bless my pastor, Lord, because he has done so much and said so much since, and I've learned a whole lot more since this pandemic. And I want to thank you and thank him for being the man of God. And then, Lord, I ask that you bless his family. They are sticking by him more than ever. And I want to thank you for that, Lord. And then, Lord, I ask that you bless the seniors. They can't get out, but keep on keeping them. Bless the sick and bereaved. And then, Lord, when it's all over and we've done all that we can do, Give us a home in your kingdom where we can praise your name forever and ever and ever. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord. How great is 
is our God. Age to age, he stands. And time is in his hand, beginning and the end, beginning and the end. The God hit three in one for the spirit the lion and the lamb, the lion and the lamb, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God, and all will see. How great is our God, oh how, how great, great is our God, say with, with me, how great is our God, oh we'll, we'll sing, sing. How, great. how great is our God.
how great thou art then sings my
how he comfort me and oh how he counsel me oh it still amazes me that I I'm glad he does. He knows my name. Hallelujah. Yeah. 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 I want to thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank the Lord. He's been so good, he's been so good, he's been good, yeah, he's been so good, been so good. All the people said amen. All the people said amen again. Thank the Lord for Jesus. We thank God for our prayer service tonight. The person of Brother Christopher Donnell Jones. Thank him for that scripture and, and prayer. All of those songs, Brother Simpson, Brother Hill, Sister Miller, and to Sister Simpson for that prayer, and to all that are here, and to all of you that are there. Uh, good God Almighty, we thank God for you tonight, and let me thank you for being so faithful and so dutiful. Let's go to the book of Micah tonight. We want to go to this seventh chapter of Micah. Uh, good to see Sister Harvey. I'm looking at her. Somebody's behind her there. Good to see her. Good to see so many of you. And those that are on our Facebook feed that we cannot see. But we want to thank you for joining in with us. As well as our Insta and our YouTube. We thank God for you. In the book of Micah, uh, chapter 7, verse number 18. I'm going to try to do more talking to you tonight. And briefly, as we cut across the field. Uh, and if I do not hoop tonight, that's because I'm trying to talk. If I end up hooping, that's because I'm a preacher. So we want to thank God for both uh, the word and uh, the utensils that God gives to us. Verse number 18, chapter 7, it reads something like this. Uh, Who is a God like unto thee that pardoned a iniquity and pass it by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retain it, not his anger forever because he delighted in mercy. He delighted in mercy. I, I want to talk to you briefly tonight, a sneak preview of God's mercy towards us. A sneak preview of God's mercy towards us. Thank you. God's people has always tugged at God's heart. 
we are not the first to tug at God's heart, nor are we the last that will tug at God's heart. It's been done before. God delivered some children of Israel out of Egypt by way of the Red Sea. And after he gets them through the Red Sea, the children began to moan and to murmur and become disgruntled. And God, because of who he is and because of his goodness and his mercy, he allowed them to tug at his heart, whereas they cried out to him. And God answered their call. Not only that, but there are many situations and many people like David who had a troubled past. And he knew how to cry out to the Lord. And it appears that uh, the moaning and the groaning and the praying and the meditating of David's heart tugged at God's heart. And can I go ahead and drop this for us tonight that we don't have to look at the children of Israel. We do not have to look at David, but we can look in the mirror at our own lives. And we'll have to admit that we've done some things that we should have been condemned a long time ago. But God, because of his mercy, and all of us have benefited from the mercies of God towards us. God, because of his mercy, sometimes by dreams he give us a sneak preview of his mercy. Sometimes by action, God gives us a sneak preview. And because all of us have lived uh, some less than perfect lives, we have tugged at God's heart even right now. Many of us are on our bended knees asking God to release us from this pandemic that we're in. And many of us are on our knees asking God to keep our health. Some of us are asking God to keep our jobs, just keep a roof over our head. And we tug at God's heart so much that God has spared us yet another day. Somebody right there ought to get happy that if you don't get happy no more tonight, that you can get happy because you made it through another day. And somebody this morning, you got on your knees and you said, it's another day's journey. And I'm glad about it. Somebody other than me ought to be glad that, that God have looked uh, beyond our shortcomings, have looked beyond our fallacies, have looked beyond our rascality and because we tug at God's heart, because his tender mercies have never succumbed to what man has done and even though we've done so much to hurt God God shows us that he loves to delight in his mercy. Somebody ought to go ahead and place it right now that you know if it had not been for God's mercy you would not be here tonight. Can I go ahead and join the party? I would wouldn't be standing here in this pulpit behind a sacred podium if it had not been for God's mercy and how he has allowed me to tug at his heart that God forgave me of some of the sins that I have committed and then God not only that but he looks beyond what I've done and given me another chance somebody ought to write right there you ought to write shout 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 because God have looked in the eyes and given us a sneak preview of what heaven is all about the way he forgives us down here on earth and because God loves us and because of God's love for us I have some good news tonight but Jones, I have some good news tonight because the writer Michael says God's people will be forgiven for their sin. Somebody ought to lift up holy hands right there that, that God's people, you have to know God for yourself. God's people will be forgiven of their sins. Consequences come. Consequences will happen. But God's people will be forgiven of their sins. 
And Micah gives us tonight a sneak preview of God's mercy. And somebody you can't shout because maybe you don't know what a sneak preview is. And with God's sneak preview, God allows us to have an advanced showing of something special. Can I go ahead and shorten the chain right there and tell you? You ought to go ahead and point at yourself because in God's eyes, we are somebody special. And if nobody else believes that you're special, you ought to think you're special because God knows you're special. And you ought to not mind pointing at yourself, telling yourself, I'm special in the eyesight of the Lord. Can I go ahead and tell you? Your chains have already been broken. Your shackles have already been unloosed because we are special in God's eyes. Sight. And it does not matter what other folks say about us as long as we know that we are special in God's eyesight. And when I think about it, that now that where we are in life right now, in this whirlwind of not knowing what will happen next, while we're in this place of where we are, I want you to know we will not always be where we are right now and that's a word for us tonight somebody is still struggling with how this world is shaping up but i have some good news tonight to let you know that we're not gonna always be where we are right now and and, and the reason why i know we're not gonna always be where we are right now because micah gives us a glorious promise this is not God's first rodeo with problems. This is not God's first time dealing in hard times. This is not God's first time having to show mercy to some hard-headed, stiff-necked folk. This is not God's first time dealing with his own people who have self-inflicted wounds. This is not God's first time dealing with suppression, not his first time dealing with racism, not his first time dealing with pandemics. God have dealt with it all before and surely what he's done before. He's a big enough God to do it again. Somebody ought to go right in right there and let me know that you know that God can and God will because God has and God does. And let me go ahead and tell you when you can put your rest on God can because God has. You can put your rest knowing that God knows what he's doing. And whenever God gets ready, he's ready to release. God is able to do whatever he wants to do because he's God all by himself. The songwriter, Brother Darrell Coley says, the reason why he can do what he want to do is because he's sovereign. And anybody that knows that God is sovereign should understand that God shows his mercy towards us, even though he don't have to. So watch this. Micah tonight informs us of a few things. And let me go ahead and tell you, I won't finish tonight, but I sure want to lay the groundwork for Sunday. As Micah tells us, by asking us a question, who is a God unlike unto you? In other words, where is the God that can compare to you? Whereas he's saying, God, who is like you? Can I go ahead and tell you there's none like you? Because I wouldn't serve a God that when it rains, I have to go put him out of the rain. I wouldn't serve a God that when I need him, I have to go bow down to a statue and he never moves. Because the God that I serve, he's able to move without ever opening his mouth. Somebody's here tonight knows that God not only moves in our lives, but God has moved on the altar of our hearts. I wouldn't serve a God that when I call out to him, he couldn't call back out to me. And he says tonight, Micah says, who is a God like you? And I can imagine Brother Hill when he said that. He was talking about who is a God like you. 
a God that can hang the sun in one place, allow the moon to reflect out the sun, but never have a collision, but yet still throw stars in their silver sockets and call one the big dipper, call the other one the little dipper, but call it in science the Milky Way. But yet have the skies blue and in the same day can have grace, guys. Who is a God like you? Who is a God that can hang silver sockets and never use a stepladder? Who is a God that can color the sun yellow and never use a highlighter? Who is a God that can have the moon reflect off of a yellow sun but have a white moon but you ever use a crayon? But yet, who's a God that can wipe away your tears when nobody else can? Who's a God that can heal a broken heart? And if my grandma was here, she'd say, who's a God that can wake you up in the morning and lie you down at night? But when you wake up in the next morning, your tiredness is gone. And you're ready for a brand new day. Micah said, who's a God like that? But then I want to ask somebody, who is the God who's able to do anything but fail? Michael said, not only do I want to ask you who is this God, but I got to tell you what this God can do. This God is able to not just allow comparisons to come short, but this God is a God who can pardon iniquities. If somebody ought to know what pardon means tonight. In other words, God is a God who can forgive us. Is there anybody other than me that need forgiveness tonight? That you know that God will forgive you because he has done it before. He's a God that he pardons our iniquities by granting us clemency. Which means when he pardons us he throws it away, never to bring it up again. He's a God that when you know we should have been dead sleeping in our grave. A God that knows we should have been locked up a long time ago. A God that knows that you messed up four jobs already. But he grants you leniency and gives you another chance. He's a God that gives a little raggedy boy like me. Another opportunity to get it right. That I messed up so much that I thank God. Say, let me bring him on in. Can I go ahead and tell you? I'm glad that he's given me another chance. Is there anybody on Zoom, anybody on Facebook, anybody on Insta that you're glad that God gave you another chance? And that's why the old warriors say, walk with me, Lord. While I'm on this tedious journey. And that lets me know that God has a way of wiping the slate clean. And thank God he's not like some of us. That we say we're going to wipe the slate clean. But the next argument, the next disagreement we have, we don't talk about what's present. But we always go back to what we've already done. I just want to drop a line to you tonight. You don't have to remind me of what I used to be. Don't nobody know what I used to be better than me. But let me tell you something, Sister Lana Randa. While you're sitting there looking at what I used to be, you ought to thank God that you're not what you used to be. Somebody on Zoom tonight ought to go ahead and wave your hands because all of us are used to be something. And the only way we're not a used to be is that we still are at this present time. And I don't want to lie like a lot of church folk. You got a lot of church folk that they sit there and lie in God's house, in God's face, and say, I don't do the things that I used to do. Well, I come out and tell you, I don't do most of the things that I used to do. But there are still some things that I'm still working on. Is there anybody here that's still working on some stuff? Michael says tonight 
Because God knows that we're working on it. And because there's no God like God. That he will pardon our iniquity. Which means he removes the iniquity. It passes over the rebellion of the remnant of his inheritance. But I got to tell you, it don't work for everybody. It only works for those who know the law. And I come by tonight to tell you, he said not only does he pardon iniquity, but he passes by the transgression. And that word transgression is a nice, fancy Hebrew word for sin. And I come out and let you know that somebody said the other day, I, I wish God would be a just God. But I want to go ahead and tell you we can't handle God's justice. Because without his twins, grace and mercy, none of us would be here tonight. And I thank God that he is a just God. But that he don't declare his justice on everything we've done. So I come out tonight to tell somebody that God passes by the transgression. And when I look at by the transgression, he passes over. And I thank God for being a Passover God. Somebody else ought to shout right there and place it wherever you need to place it. That you thank God for being a Passover God. And then I know you have some smart Alex on Zoom that said, what he passed over. Let me go ahead and tell you, when you were sleeping and creeping, he passed over. When we were sinning on last night, he passed over. When we were somewhere that we weren't supposed to be talking and being with somebody that we weren't supposed to be with, he passed over. When we should have been in church thinking about God's word, but yet we're doing something else, he passed over. But I come to let you know that Michael says because of the kind of God he is, he's able not to look the other way, but yet to give us another chance. Who he is like God, who is able to remove our iniquities, but he had passed over the rebellion of his chosen people. And I thank God that even though he was talking to Israel, by way of Jesus, I'm wrapped up in the chosen people. And when I think about the goodness of God and how good he's been to you and me. Micah says, I'm not through with trying to get you to define how good God is and who can compare. Because not only does he call over our transgressions, but I want you to know that some things that we're going through is because of God's anger. God is angry how we placed any and everything in front of his service. Instead of coming to church on Sunday morning, some of you that's begging to come back to church. And when the church doors were open, you were at the casino on the bus on Sunday morning. And God says, I'm getting tired of the monkey business. Some of us could not come to church on Sunday morning. Because you wasn't at the casino, but we was at the clubs on Saturday night, waking up with a Saturday night hangover. And God says, I'm tired of it. I believe God got tired of folk coming to church, even in the pulpit, sowing discord against the believers. And God says, I'm tired of it. But I come out of night to let you know, that all discard is not in the pulpit. Because some of you sow discard in the pew. Whatever the preacher says, you have something negative to say about the preacher. But yet when hell break loose in your family, you call on the very man that you talked about. God said, I'm tired of it. He sent this prophet Micah tonight to warn us 
that we better get straight and get our houses in order. Because God is angry. God is upset. And the fierceness of God will come out. But Micah gives us a promising story. And I like the story that Micah gives tonight. As I skip across and move to my clothes. That even though none is like God. Micah reminds us that he would not stay angry forever. And that's good news on the night to understand that God will not stay angry. But it does not give us a license to keep on keeping on in the same way and in the same fashion. But God wants his children to change their MO. But what I like about the text is that God will because he promised and since he promised he's never come short of, of his word. And Micah says tonight, the Lord retained not his anger forever, but he delights in his mercy. Somebody tonight ought to be glad that the Lord delights in his mercy because I done so much to be thankful for what the Lord has done in my life. Somebody in the church tonight ought to be glad that God has shown compassion on his children. Somebody tonight ought to know that God has been good to you. I come by to tell you on my way to my seat, I had three points, but I can't get to them tonight. But the last point that I had, God will not be angry with his children forever and ever, which means that God will take care of you and me. He promised never to leave us never to forsake us and somebody here tonight know that God promised is his word Micah says as he ends this prophetic book with a great promise given by the human race God says I will come to see about you I will never disown you again you are my people and he promised to come see about me. Is there anybody here that knows God will come see about you? How do you know? Because he promised and God will hold to his word by his covenant that he gave to Abraham. He promised to hold us as joint heirs in the family of faith. I come by to tell you on my way to my seat when I was a little boy my mom and my daddy gave me a promise I heard them say if you bring home all A's on your report card we'll buy you a doom buggy willy anybody my age knows about a doom buggy willy a doom buggy willy was a prize toy it had two buttons and when you got on your knees the doom buggy willy with one time would back up hit the button real fast the doom buggy willy would rise up and go down the road i come to tell you when report card came out i had all these because i wanted a doom buggy willy and somebody said, well, did you think 
you will get the doom buggy with it. I say yes because my parents promised me. And when they promise, I just believe that they will hold to their word. Soon as I gave my report card, my mama and my dad left the house, put us in the back seat, went into Sears and Roebuck, came out of Sears and Roebuck, did not see anything, went to Woolworth, came out of Woolworth with a submarine sandwich, but I did not see the doom buggy with it, went in Woolco, and came out with a box about 12 inches long, about 3 inches high, in a cube shape, they told me to open the box, and it was a doom buggy with it, what I'm trying to say is my mama and my daddy gave me a promise and God promised never to leave me alone I got one more story before I go to my seat that was a little boy that was with his daddy and they got lost in the woods but they had a tent and while they were lost in the woods they got nighttime nobody came to find who they were or where they was staying and the dad said we ran out of food and I need you to stay here no matter what happens stay in the tent and I promise I'll be back for you dad went out trying to find some food and while he was trying to find food nightfall came and when daddy looked back could not see a tent but what daddy didn't know is the sun was still in the tent and while he was in the tent some coyotes came they start howling but the boy never stopped playing and while he was playing the coyotes were howling he kept on playing and while he played he started making some noises the noises made the coyotes leave him alone and while he was in the tent a skunk came by and when the skunk came by the skunk backed up uh, to spray his mist uh, but the boy was playing uh, with a bunch of marbles uh, and while he was playing uh, with the marbles uh, start hitting the marbles uh, with another marble and the noise uh, annoyed the skunk uh, and the skunk left uh, here comes uh, a bear came uh, to the tent uh, and anybody know bears uh, no prayer is good at prayer meeting, uh, but it ain't worth a darn. Uh, at a bad meeting, uh, the bad came uh, to the tent, uh, but the little boy uh, has stopped making noise. Uh, the little boy has stopped playing with his mom, uh, but the little boy had seven little cars, uh, and with the seven little cars, uh, anytime he do it, he say, mm-hmm, uh, and when he, mm-hmm, uh, the little bitty cars uh, had little bitty lights, uh, but when you had seven lights uh, with seven cars uh, it's 14 lights uh, and the lights got so bright uh, when the bear got to the tent uh, he thought it was a fire and the bear turned around uh, and soon came his daddy and when his daddy got there somebody in the next morning rescued the little boy and rescued the dad and when the news reporters found out what happened the news reporters uh, asked the little boy were you scared when your daddy was away were you scared when the coyotes came were you scared when the skunk came were you scared when the bear came the little boy looked at the reporter looked back at his daddy he looked at the reporter looked back at his daddy looked at the reporter looked back at his daddy told the reporter I was not scared because my daddy promised that he'll be back I come by to tell you sooner than right now he's coming back and Michael said the promises that God gives is his salvation and those of us who trust in the Lord we will reap the benefits of God's promises those of us who know who God is we will
will be forgiven of our sins. I'll come by to tell you our sins will be cast in the sea and forgotten forever. He promised. Yes, he did. Never to leave me. Oh, yeah. Hey, all right. I'll come by to tell you on my way to my seat. The Lord will be merciful and the Lord will be faithful to us and he will bless his people and when I was going on my way to hell he promised to send somebody do you know who he is his name is Jesus and I come to tell you to know him is to know he came as a baby lived as a man died as a servant rose as a savior left here as a redeemer but one of these days and it won't be very long he's coming back y'all as a king ain't it all right I say ain't it all right I say ain't it all right ain't it all right y'all say yeah say yeah say yeah I know he's all right. Won't he? 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 Say yeah. If you know he will, say yeah. He promised. He promised. Oh, yeah. Ah. He promised. Oh, he promised. Oh, he promised. Yeah. 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 Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Promise. He promised. He promised. He promised. It's a sneak preview. Of God's mercy. Not towards nobody else. But to me. He did not pass me by. His mercy. His mercy. It endured forever. I say his mercy towards little old me. His mercy. And somebody ought to shout right there that God's mercy toward us is unprecedented. God's mercy towards you and towards me. Oh Lord. God. Is not through with us yet. I'm telling you. He's keeping us here. For a reason. 
remember to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. And if we do that, I mean, if we really do that, he's going to keep his promise. He sent his son, Jesus. And he didn't just send him to be sending him. He sent him for a reason. Can y'all help me tonight? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, Zoom. Come on, help us. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, Facebook. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Who? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, Insta. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, I love you, I love you. Who? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Savior, Savior, Savior. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I want him, I want him, I want him. Anybody want him? I want him, I want him, I want him. I want him, I want him, I want him. Who? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Gotta have him, gotta have him, gotta have him. I'm talking about me now. Gotta have him, gotta have him, gotta have him. Gotta have him, gotta have him, gotta have him. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 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 The old preacher would slow it down real slow. He'll say, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Whoa. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, then he'll say, Who? Oh. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> Old lady in the back will say, I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him. I love him, I love him, I love him. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If he's been good to you, come on, sing it with me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's after you had a few birthdays. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Woo! Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lily of the valley. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Wheel in the middle of wheel. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My midnight rider, yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus. My, my. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Thank God for Jesus. Let me do this real quickly. We have to get back to just holding our hour services, and I know that we're going to try to start back with that next week. I don't want to continue to run over. God has been so tremendously good to us that sometimes you can't just cut it off. And I want to thank God for each and every one of you, no matter what feed that you're on tonight. And if the Lord has been good to you, every last person on any of our feeds, whether you're on Zoom, Facebook or Instagram. I just want you to put in your chats. I want you to put in your feeds, your IM, your DM, and just let somebody know the Lord has been good to me. Again, I thank Brother Jones for coming tonight. Amen. As always, our faithful one, Brother Hill. I thank the Simpsons for coming. Uh, Brother Simpson, God gave him a little strength because he was weak and didn't think he was going to be able to do it. And let me say this to Brother Simpson and others that have underlying issues. He reminds me of the two men that quoted the 23rd number of Psalm. The first man that quoted the 23rd number of Psalm, he articulated it very well. He knew where the periods were supposed to be. He knew where the commas were. He knew exactly what semicolons were. He knew how to make his voice rise when he got to the Lord is my shepherd. He pronounced his words very proficiently and profoundly and when he got through a few people hand clapped but that came a man i just believe he had some underlying issues had not been to school he was a little sickly and he quoted the 23rd number of the song he did not sound as good as the man before him but he gave god all he had he was committed to the cause of reading the 23rd number of Psalm. He did not care how he sounded. He did not care. He ran past periods. He did not care where the commas were. He did not even know about a semicolon or a colon. He had underlying issues. But the main issue he had is that he loved the Lord. And when he got through, the folk did not only clap, but the folk gave him a standing ovation. And when they got through, somebody walked up to the teacher and said, why did they only clap when the man that spoke first? And why did they give a standing ovation to the man that seemed as if he didn't do as well? Well, the teacher told him, he said, the first man knew the psalm, but the second man knew the psalmist. I'm talking to somebody here tonight. It's all right to know the psalm, but it's sure a whole lot better when you know the psalmist. Anybody tonight know the psalmist? Maybe you can't do what others can do because of what you have going on with your body but if you know who God is all by yourself if you know who the psalmist is if the psalmist have been good to you maybe he didn't give you what he gave us you've been walking around wondering why you have COPD you've been walking around wondering why you're diabetic you've been wondering why you have a tight tongue you're wondering why you don't have a voice to sing you're wondering why God didn't give you a gift to preach you're 
wondering why you're going through what you're going through. I want to go ahead and tell you tonight, you don't have to know the psalm, but you ought to know the psalmist. And when you know the psalmist, God will get the glory. Anybody here tonight know that God will get the glory? Go ahead and tear it up tonight. Put your hands together if you know God will get the glory. Let me thank you. And while you get your gifts together, those of you that have not done your Givelify yet, those of you that have not given to your ministries yet, make sure if you put your finances in the mail slot, make sure you push it all the way through. If you're going to bring your finances up to the church, Sister Sims will be here from 1030 to about 3.30 4 o'clock tomorrow. Make sure that you go ahead and hit your give the five you want to give electronically. We want to thank God for what you've already done. And we thank God for just being God all by himself. Because he's a God like no other. He's a God that cannot be compared to. So we thank you for tonight as we get ready to leave tonight. May God bless each and every one of you. On tonight, thank God for our media ministry. Sister Miller, let me thank God for you on tonight. And I really want to thank God for Brother Simpson and then Brother Hill, how he makes things continue to flow. Reverend Baptiste, we thank God for your faithfulness. Let's continue to pray one for another. Come on, let's, let's, let's get out of here. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I need it. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, bless. Oh, bless. Me now. Me now. My say. I come to to thee. Oh Lord, how we come to thee. Because there's nowhere else we can go. Oh God, how we thank you. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your pardon. We thank you for favor. And we thank you for being in where we are right now. Because for whatever reason, something good is going to come out of this. Now may I, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the love of God. And the communion of the Holy Ghost. Rest with us all. And all the people said amen. God bless you on tonight.